So we can estimate uh, the stress changes, and I want to emphasize changes here because this cannot be used uh, very accurately to estimate the stress in any way, but rather just the change in the stress, okay? And there's a lot of assumptions built into this. Again, one of them is that the horizontal stresses are equal. So SH max equals SH min, and there's no strain in the horizontal directions. So this equation ought to look familiar to you. I don't think I've posted homework three solution yet. I'll do that today. But hopefully, uh, when you work to homework three, you derive this equation. Right? Now, it may not look exactly like this, you know, because you could, depending on how you group the terms, you could left this term separated out and then grouped uh, and group this guy with that one, right? But this is one way to write it. And this, uh, the reason it's written like this is because what we want to do is we're going to take <coughs> we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to the change in pore pressure. And so writing it like that just makes it easy to see. Right? So if I take the derivative of both sides with respect to pore pressure, this term goes away. And then I just have this. And then the key here is that I say during production. Right? So during production, the change in horizontal stress with respect to the change in pore pressure is always going to be negative okay? during production. So this is always going to be a negative. So there's implicitly <coughs> a negative sign over here, just in the fact that we're talking about we're this, this guy is always negative. We're depleting the reservoir. The change in the, change in the pore pressure is a drop. Right? So there's a negative in the denominator. So there's an Im implicit negative out here by saying production. So, so then I just move the negative to the other side for, with respect to that term. And then that's how you get this. <coughs> OK? So, uh, So then if you just discretize that, you know, take our continuous derivative and turn it into increments. So hopefully you saw what I did there, but I just uh, take the continuous derivative and turn it into increments as an estimation of the continuous derivative. And then solve for a change in horizontal stress, and we have that, OK? And then if you just plug in some numbers, some realistic numbers to give us an idea, uh, for example, if we take the Poisson ratio to be a quarter, 0.25, and we take the BO coefficient to be 1, which is you know, realistic numbers for a reservoir in the ballpark, then you get this estimate, this rule of thumb, if you will. Right? So for every increment change in pore pressure, <coughs> Then you get, and you get two thirds times that a change in horizontal stress under these assumptions. And so, if you look at um, some real data. Using this estimate with different Poisson ratios, I don't know why the lines didn't show up, but the lines should run roughly there. And remember, Poisson ratio is always a positive number, right? So, so there's nothing up there. So, Poisson ratio is always a positive number. So, this is the stress change with pressure, which Zobat calls this parameter A. Okay, so it's this is delta S, delta P, over delta P. He calls it A. So the stress change with pressure is a function of BO coefficient. And then just plug in different values of Poisson ratio, you get they, they lie along these lines. Okay? And so then if you look at a lot of actual formations, real formations, and you get the, you know, if you plot where the real formations fall, right, the point here is they fall in a realistic range for the most part. So the point is that while it's just an estimation, because we made up a lot of assumptions to get there, it's not an awful one. Right? The only case, like th th these guys um, you know, up here have Poisson ratios close to zero. That, that's probably an indication that there's some inelasticity going on in the reservoir. 
And it turns out if you look at the formation of these reservoirs, they're very ch chalky formations. And so they're, 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 in a way, soft, if you will. And so it's a good, you can, it's a good bet that there's a significant amount of inelasticity or plasticity occurring in these reservoirs. And that's why it appears that the Poisson ratio is close to zero. But for most of them, you're in this range of reasonable Poisson ratios, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. I mean, this is, that's a reasonable. So there's a reasonable assumption. And in a little while, we're going to look a little more detail uh, this field and this field as sort of case studies.